What is up folks, welcome back to another video. We are standing out here in a blazing hot parking lot in front of Academy Sports and Outdoors to talk about summertime fishing. One of the most popular videos on my channel of all time are building different fishing tackle boxes or fishing kits and kind of building them around a seasonal approach to bass fishing. So we're gonna go in this Academy in just a minute and with a $100 budget, we're gonna try to build the absolute best summertime bass fishing kit. Guys, this time of year, it is super hot and thus a lot harder to catch bass, or any fish for that matter. But I have found through my many years of trying many different ways that give you a little bit of an edge during the summer. I'm gonna share them with you folks today. Let's get inside, let's start building this kit. Smash the thumbs up button if you like these videos. Make sure you guys are subscribing with the bell notification enabled. See you guys inside. So I wanted to set that $100 limitation because I feel like that's a reasonable amount that a person could walk into a store like Academy or wherever you do your fishing shopping and be able to build out a tackle box that could last you a season or at least a couple weeks. Look how realistic these H20X swim baits look. Just look at these things. Wow, dude. I thought they were dead fish. Like I thought they were like catfish bait or whatever, dead shad. That's or whatever. pretty sick. Well, I think we just found lure number one. I originally wasn't going to do this, so I found a different color of that one we were just looking at, and it's just a simple paddle tail swim bait. You know, you've got a fixed hook already in there, and look at that. That is the most shaddy looking thing I've it's seen shed. today. These are only, that was $3.50. We're gonna keep track of the budget as we go along. We're not gonna include tax. We're just gonna kind of guesstimate and try to get close. But I'm gonna spend $3.50 on that. Three quarter of an ounce. It's a four inch swim bait. I, I wasn't gonna get one of those, but for $3.50, that's not a bad way to start. In the summertime, one thing I really like to do, two things I like to do that kind of mold into this one bait. I like to slow down a little bit, and I like to increase the profile of the size of that bait that I'm now working slowly, if that makes sense. So, big worm. Okay, big ribbon tail worm. This right here is a 10 incher, the Mondo worm, obviously, Guggen baits. It's a big ribbon tail worm. That's the important part. Forget about brands for a second. Big, long worm, bigger profile of a bait. You're gonna work this slower. We're gonna work it actually a couple different ways. We're gonna rig it maybe three different ways total. So we'll talk more about that later. But a big worm, something about the summertime and a big worm, it just seems to always draw a bite. Maybe it's because the fish don't have to exert quite as much energy when they go after it, maybe, you know, it's moving slowly, Could it's be, a yeah. big meal. So they figured that big meal is gonna get them through a longer period of time without having to eat as much and expend more energy. Who knows the thought process I like that. of a largemouth bass, but the big worms will not disappoint you in the summertime. I think this is like a watermelon red, which is just basically green pumpkin with red flakes. I mean, OG, most og -est of OG colors, honestly. That pack is seven, nope, 650. So 650 plus 350, we are at 10. Now, That's it. Didn't think I could do that kind of math, did you? You're quick with it. All right, folks, let's pause today's video just for a second to talk about something very important, your mental health. I know, a little bit of an uncomfortable topic. And in my opinion, we need to start normalizing the conversation around all of our mental health. And as a US Army veteran who served two tours in Afghanistan, and as somebody who's dealt with PTSD, like myself, I can tell you, mental health is a serious matter. Regardless if you have an actual diagnosed medical condition like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human being who lives in this world and deals with stress every single day, and you're struggling with something. Either way, therapy can give you the tools to help approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited for today's video to be sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And that is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as just a few days. It's super easy to sign in, answer a few questions, and get matched up with your own personal therapist. Click the link right at the top of the description if you wanna learn more, or visit betterhelp.com slash lojo. By clicking on that link, you're gonna get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with the therapist to see if that helps you. 
Guys, there's a lot of different ways to deal with things that are bothering you or that you're struggling with, but therapy is one of those ways that has helped a lot of people in the past, including myself, and it might help you too. So give BetterHelp a shot. Once again, there's a link right at the top of the description. Check them out, give 10% off your first month. It also supports my channel when you click that link. But most importantly, folks, take care of yourselves, take care of your mental health, don't delay another day. Now folks, back to today's video. Next up is gonna be a lot of people's favorite summertime lure, a topwater frog. I mean, do I even have to say anything else? Honestly, topwater is obviously the most fun way to bass fish. 100%. Stop me when I tell a lie. Uh, it tends to catch bigger fish on average, I would say. Yeah, agreed. I've broken my PB three or four different times using topwater and different topwaters, so there's a size element. So I chose a popping frog because for my money, a popping frog is a lot more versatile than let's say like a regular tipped frog, like with a normal snout that kind of has a point. I mean, you know, this is supposedly a walking frog, right? That's the shape. No, yep. But the thing is you can walk a popping frog very easily. Yeah. And you can still use it as a popper, which, you know, hence the popping mouth. So I always, given the choice, I always take a popping frog. Color doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me, black or white. I think the underside of this one's white, the top's green, which is just pure marketing. Doesn't matter yep. at all. But hey, I like to look at something kind of cool on the back of the frog too, so I don't mind it. This will be the first topwater lure in our kit. This will not be the last topwater lure in our kit. This bad boy is $9.50, but we're just gonna call that $10. That way we can make this as true to budget as we possibly can. So that takes us up to $20 total. So we just got a gigantic worm that we're gonna kind of drag along the bottom in different ways. But now let's talk about a smaller worm. That's right, a Ned Rig, folks. Now look, I understand the Ned Rig is not as sexy as the Texas Rig or like a Wacky Rig, you know? This is not necessarily power fishing, okay? As the look of it would indicate, it's kind of a finesse technique. But if you remember in the beginning, we said that was one of the techniques is downsizing your presentation. So we're gonna get some terminal tackle that matches up for this in the end. We're gonna save some budget for that. But the Ned Rig, do not sleep on it. It catches big fish too. I was in a boat on Lake Okeechobee with Mikey Balls. This was like four or five years ago. And that man caught a 10 pounder no on a Ned Rig in the middle of the summer. It happened. Do not sleep on the Ned Rig in the summertime. That was $4.99, bringing us up to a solid $25. So we're only a quarter of the way through our budget and we've already got a really good start with plastics. But we need to move on to some moving bait type things, which I'm sure a lot of you guys want to hear. Not everybody wants to slow down in the summertime and I get it, so we got something for y'all too. A good spinnerbait, folks. Let's be honest, a spinnerbait could probably go in every seasonal box besides winter, but during the summertime, if you want to keep power fishing, this is one of those baits that you can do it with because in the summertime, those low light situations like early in the morning and late in the evening become more and more important because during the middle of the day, it's so hot. So not only are the fish shut down and stop biting, but the angler themselves are baking. So if you're hitting one of those low light times, the spinner bait will absolutely, can absolutely just crush them. That's a quarter ounce though, that's not gonna work. Donkasaurus right there. Yeah, it is. Look at how pretty that thing is though. That spinner bait was only $3, so that brings our total up to 28, I believe. Yes. Yep. Okay, $28, still doing really good here. Speaking of wire baits that I love, or moving wire baits, like a spinner bait, where is it, where is it, there it is. You already should know, okay? You know what? I mean, I say it on this channel so often. I feel like I have helped resurrect the buzz bait industry, but if you pick one of these things up and you start fishing with it, especially in those early morning, late evening situations, like I was talking about with the spinner bait, you will become a fan of the buzz bait. Andrew, you've been there. Oh, 100%, dude. You've seen some of these blow ups that this thing gets in situations where you just think it's dumb to be throwing mm -hmm. it. The buzz bait is, it's king. It's old school, but there's a reason why it's still around, because it works. This was one of the lures that helped me break my PB over and over again when I was a younger angler and just figuring everything out. I caught an eight pound, six ouncer on this once, which was my then PB, so white or black, like I said, I don't get super complicated with my top water colors. I don't think it's that relevant. I think it's about choosing the right top water lure and putting it in the right position. So that is $7. Perfect, there's 30, or wait, 35. 35. 35, yep. keeping it nice and simple, good. So we're not even halfway there yet. And we're kinda, kinda crushing it right now. We've got a hell of a tackle box already. Next up, finally got a crankbait appearance on this list. 
And it's gonna be a square bell right here, folks. So let me explain. You could easily go the deep diver route. And I might even include the deep diver on this list, but let me tell you why the banger, for me, is a better all around option. So most deep divers are gonna have kind of a depth that they get to every single time you retrieve them. You're kind of locked into that deep depth. So for example, if you're throwing like a 5XD or something that dives 12 feet deep, but then all of a sudden you get up on a five foot grass flat, well that bait is no longer viable. But with a square bill, I feel like you have more of a range. Like if I put my rod tip way down and I'm cranking it, it's gonna go deeper. If I have my rod tip up and kind of speed crank it, it's gonna stay higher in the water column, almost like a wake bait. So to me, a square bill is more versatile overall. I think most people would agree with that. This particular color, I mean, it's a shad imitation. It's got a little bit of chartreuse on the back. So, I mean, that's just a beautiful color. This one dives two to five feet. So like I said, that's a nice little range. I could probably manipulate that more to like one and a half feet to six feet maybe. So that's a nice little diving range right there. That is $9. So that takes us up to 44. That's right. But we've already got two top waters in our tackle box so why not make it three we're gonna hit them with a little spook here a little topwater walking bait action guys one of the most exciting lures I mean you could basically apply everything that I said for the frog and the buzz bait to this lure like when you want to fish it but this thing is so dang exciting I mean it just triggers the most violent reaction strikes and here's the thing about this one if you're not just fishing lakes and ponds if you're fishing river systems as well everybody should know these slay in rivers see this thing is nine dollars really no it's nine fifty dang when dang. did Edon become like expensive top dog 53.50? That's it. Let's just go ahead and round that up to like 55 just to keep this math straight because I like it. My brain is kind of swimming right now. I know we're building one heck of a tackle box, but a summertime tackle box would be nothing without the next thing. The jig, folks. Come on, you guys thought that we weren't going to talk about the jig? I mean, this thing has been catching fish since the beginning. I mean, this thing catches fish so good that even a cheap knockoff imitation version catches fish, which we've built yeah. in Texas. That's right. Which we took a hook, put some rubber bands on it, and a, like a stupid little skirt holder O-ring, and it worked. Jigs are also super versatile. You don't have to just drag them along the bottom, although you could because they're definitely meant to do that, but flipping directly into structure and cover, down trees, under docks. You could also use them as swim jigs by putting a, any type of a swimming plastic on there and just popping it or swimming it. So it's super versatile lure. This one's only 550, so that brings us up to like 60 or $61. Man. So what I have here, folks, is about $24 worth of terminal tackle. So I kinda thought it would be boring to go from one item to the next, just one by one, but this is gonna be all of our terminal for all the different techniques that we're gonna be using today. We've got stuff to do a Carolina rig, a normal weighted Texas rig, a Ned rig, weightless. We've got all of it, everything that we're gonna need. So that's $24 approximately, taking us to a solid 85 overall. So. We're gonna try to find ourselves a nice little tackle box, something to contain all of this stuff so we're not carrying it in a loose grocery bag. I totally forgot that H2OX has these 3,700 waterproof boxes for like 849, which is crazy Great low price. to me. I can't believe it's that low. So let's just hold it right there. Let's actually check out and see how much we've spent, see how close we were to that $100 mark. Once we purchase all this stuff, we're gonna get everything laid out in the tackle box, and we're gonna get up nice and early tomorrow, because it's about 102 degrees right now. So we're gonna wait till first thing tomorrow morning. We're gonna start the fishing for this video. See you guys out there. All right, folks, it is the next day, and check it out. We got the kit right here, fully assembled, packed up nicely in this little blue tackle box. And if I do say so myself, it turned out pretty dang nice. So we got all of our summertime lures, all of our rigs, all of our hooks, everything in one tackle box. And hopefully over the next few hours, I can show you guys just how effective all these summer lures can be. It's morning time, but it's already extremely hot. So we're probably gonna start off with a mixture of moving baits and slow baits, just to kind of feel the fish out. By the way, this was supposed to be a $100 fishing kit. We hit $100 on the nose. So this is truly a $100 taxes and everything summertime fishing kit. Let's go catch some summer fish. So we went ahead and rigged up the square bill crankbait, 
the spinner bait. Shout out to the airplane. Got that little swim bait, the plastic paddle tail swim bait, and got the buzz bait all rigged up. Basically, the thinking is if you're going to use the moving baits, now is probably the time. The sun's only going to get up more, it's only going to get hotter, the bite's only going to slow down in theory. So, we're going to try all the moving baits first thing this morning. All right, well, my opportunity to use the buzz bait is disappearing quickly. So, I think I'm going to try to use this thing first. I just saw a bass over here in this cut. Not sure if he would even eat a topwater right now, but you never know until you try. God, the noise that that buzz bait makes when it comes out of the package is just, oh, my. oh, oh, I just landed right next to a fish. I bet you that was that fish that I saw a minute ago. That it was too. He went right back to that cut, but the old buzz may have been too much for him. Maybe too much for him. I need to start paralleling this bank right here. Right on the outside, this little scum edge. Now, like I said, when I was picking this lure, this is a much better lure at night or early in the morning, late in the evening, low light situations or like an overcast, cloudy day. They're also great in the rain, like a light rain. The buzzbait bite can just be fire. The great part about this little fishing kit tackle box is if one thing isn't working or if one technique isn't working, you could easily switch, which is what we're gonna have to do here pretty soon. We're gonna have to move away from the moving baits at some point today and slow things down, but I'm not ready to do that just yet. By the way, if you folks want a chance to win that tackle box right there, that fully loaded summertime fishing kit, keep on watching and I will give you guys instructions on how to do so shortly. Let me pick something else up for a minute. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I feel like the spinner bait would be the obvious option, but I'm not that kind of guy. I don't like to go with the obvious option. Let me throw the square bill a little bit. I want to crank a little bit out here in some of this slightly deeper water. This thing only dives two to five feet, which is going to be perfect for a pond like this. All right, I hear people screaming it in the comment section. Let's throw the spinnerbait for a little while, shall we? Let's throw the old spinnerbait for a while. Oh man, you talk about an OG fish catching machine anytime, anywhere. But especially in this situation, we got some pretty stained water. We got some, some structure and cover, not a lot. Oh, wow. I think that may have already been in this reel. Ooh. Nice. Yoinks. Okay, so we're not gonna be throwing the spinnerbait on that combo. We might have to re-rig that one and revisit this. All right, we gotta be quiet coming up to this cove because I know there's fish in it. We gotta attack them the right way. All right, let's give this little realistic swim bait a chance. There's not too many things that imitate a shad better than that. I can't tell if this thing sucks or if it's just catching grass. Dude, what's the deal here? Are, do you, are, is the tail even moving? Okay, yeah, it's, it's swimming. But if it gets even a piece of grass on it, it's just screwed. So I'm going to have to kind of burn this thing just to keep it out of the junk. Oh, that was a, may have been a branch. May have been a branch. May have been a branch. Ooh. Oh, frick. That's definitely something hard yeah and exposed hooks bro yep they are a whole lot of fun oh oh i'm moving the structure oh my gosh i pulled Dude. it off how did that happen yeah 
Okay, this is not a great lure for this pond either. <laughs> it's so heavy, it sinks so fast. It's getting in that grass super quick. Oh, I'm over a tree. Oh, I'm on. I'm on. The buzz bait strikes again. I'm honestly a little shocked, but at the same time, I'm not. Don't do it, Junior. Look at this little squeaker. What is he doing? <laughs> he was hungry, dude. There you go, folks. White buzz bait, middle of the day. Like I've said, it just works. What can you say? It got clouded for like 10 minutes, and that's all the buzz bait needed. Not a big fish. I get it. Let's get a little football throw. Ah! Little lawn dart action there. Yeah. Ow, he's spying me on the way out. I guess I deserve that for football chucking him. Finally, broke the skunk. We've been out here for about 45 minutes. We've been grinding our butts off. At least we got the skunk out of the boat right now. And the buzz bait claimed the first victim. I can't believe it. Not sure where to go from here because that was kind of a weird bite. It was like right on the edge of this grass. I was almost getting stuck in the grass. So they got to be holding tight to this cover. We've already seen a few bass busting bait up shallow. That's going to be the deal, apparently. Now it's time. Now we know the fish in this pond are chasing shad, and they're actually eating lures. So we're going to give them the best shad invitations that I know of. All right, folks, if you're still watching and you want a chance to win this kit, I'm going to put back every lure that we used in today's video. I'm going to put everything back in this kit exactly how it was in the beginning. And I'm going to send it to one of you guys. All you have to do is smash the thumbs up button liking this video that you're watching right now. And then number two, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled. That way in my next upload, I'll announce the winner. I'll try to put it on screen. I'll put it in the description and I'll put like a comment of the giveaway winner. So make sure you guys get in on that giveaway. Sit back and relax. Watch the rest of this video. Hopefully we can catch some more fish. All right, folks, that last pond was kind of a bust. So we have made a little bit of a spot move here. Now I kept on all the rest of the lures that I had tied on, but I traded out the buzz bait for the frog. Since we have now caught a fish on the buzz bait, we can eliminate that. Yep, yep. Just a little modification to the old froggy. Don't mind me. We have not fished this pond in a while. In fact, the last time we were here, we were placing gigantic bass in it from the dried up pond right there. So we know for a fact, there are large fish in this pond. Oh my God. Dude, Andrew, you almost walked into that, bro. I don't know how well you guys can see that gigantic spider in the web right there. Oh. That was close, man. You were almost in it. I, was, I don't even remember what I was about to say. Let me try this frog just a little bit because we're not going to have much topwater time left. I, I just have to feel. And this pond, we came here because it's, it's mostly shaded right now in the middle of the day, which is a huge advantage considering how hot it is. So this water is going to be a lot cooler than what we were just fishing. And this is a spring fed pond as well, I believe. So we'll see. Try to crank one out of here. I like the crankbait in this water clarity. All right, folks, we have changed ponds again, and we've also completely changed tactics because the moving bait bite obviously is not happening right now so now we're here at this crystal clear fountain pond been here a few times there are some actual surprisingly big bass in here but there's plenty of fish in general i've still got the swim bags i think that could work in a really clear water environment like this this super natural shad look but we went ahead and downsized and we got the ned rig in the game right here so I'm only bringing the two rods down here because I want to focus on these two techniques, but I've also got a couple extras in my pocket if I need to change. This water is so dang clear. 
Look, we're going to be able to see the swim bait the whole way back. But I can see it already. So we'll be able to see if a bass eats it for sure. All right. If I can see it from way over here, then the, that means a bass can see it from far distances. So I got a lot of confidence in this, actually. I think they're out deep, man. Let's go find them. Do it. I got something for them. Who's in that fountain? Ooh. Oh, I'm hung. No, I must have cast it over the chain. Yoinks. Okay, you know what? That's actually fine because I wanted to use the Ned rig anyways. It's calling to me. Looks like a little turd. Yes, I am aware. Basically is a little turd. I don't know. We'll have to ask the bass why they eat it, but they do. I'm going to put it in the same area and I bet you we at least get nibbled here in the first couple casts. him had one through a terrible hook set because i wasn't sure oh yeah definitely something chewing on the old ned right there okay that's like my third real cast with the ned rig hence why it's in this kit to begin with let's see if we can actually catch this fish now i'm basically just casting out to the deepest water right next to that fountain the thing about a Ned is you don't really do a whole lot. Like this is the kind of all I'm doing here. I'm just kind of shaking my rod a little bit, making it dance a little bit on the bottom. That's it. That's kind of the beauty in it is how simple it is. But something had crushed it and was just swimming away from that fountain with it. Mm. Oh my God, he's got, does he have it? This tiny bass has got it. <laughs> no! That was the smallest bass of all time, but he had it in his mouth and I had him hooked. Lost him. Dude, the Ned rig's putting in work, but I am failing. Wow. That was the smallest yes, bass that you could ever hook with an artificial lure. The Ned rig's on fire right now, but so are our bodies and minds yep. because it's 112. Well, this is gonna be a treat for you, my friend. Can't wait. It's probably a little thick going down right now. Let me check. Eat all the snakes out real quick. We decided to switch up the old venue and attack this from more of a kayak perspective. That way we can actually get out there into the water and put the rest of the summertime kit to the test. This looks like a chiggers infestation if I've ever seen one. Alligator, don't do it to me. Wow, this has gotten to be quite the sketchy entrance right here. Didn't used to be this sketchy. I mean, this is just water moccasin territory. Don't think about it. <laughs> Too late. Keep paddling. <laughs> I'm already thinking about it quite a bit. Dude, look at the grass. This is crazy. This all used to be open water. This is nutty what has happened to this pond over years. Andrew's making his way. I'm in. Well, kind of. There's more grass coming up. Hold on here. Oh, my. Okay, this is definitely where the alligator's been crawling in and out. 100%. Look at all this laid down grass right here, guys. Yeah, all this right here. Oh yeah, that's pretty definite that that's where the gator's been crawling in and out. So that's good. Maybe we're disturbing his home. Wow, this is, wow, it's deep right here too. Yoinks. Oh, we in here now, baby. We're in here. I'm gonna try to be kind of semi-quiet upon entry. 
because this paw is not very big. You don't want to disturb anything. Now I have quite a few things out of the tackle box rigged up this morning, including spinnerbait, frog, got the buzzbait right there. And then on Andrew's kayak, I have the Ned rig, the Texas rig with the big worm, and a swim bait maybe? All the things that we have not caught fish on yet, which is basically everything. And then I have the rest of the kit. The thing about this pond is it's very shallow throughout, which is really common with a lot of ponds, honestly. And that's why I picked so many topwater lures in this kit. It's because if you're dealing with a shallower than average pond, like this one's probably like average depth three feet and maybe have a spot or two where it's four or five. But when you have that shallow water, that top water can just really excel. And it's just the most fun to fish, let's be honest. Not even close. Oh my God, dude. The frog got hit. It got hit like on entry right there. Yeah, it got pulled down. It got pulled, it got pulled under and like drug. There we go. That's a little closer to where he was. Oh, oh. I don't know if he has it or not. I don't. Sure. <laughs> That was crazy. That feels good. I can't even tell. Having a seat on the frog. Look at that. You're joking me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my Lord. Please, sir. I bet you anything that was that very aggressive gentleman over that way. Don't do it, friend. Look, ah, on the frog. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> he was barely hooked. He was skin hooked on the side of the mouth. There you go, folks, topwater frog. Just barely slurped it. There was really no blow up at all. That's a pretty fish right there. Out of a tiny little pond like this, kind of a hidden pond. That's just fish number one, folks. We just got here 10 minutes into the day. That right there is nice. Nice to start with. Top water, man. Even though that wasn't that exciting because he didn't blow up, he just kind of slurped it. But we saw him chasing like 10 seconds before that. There are tons of bass in here. There's tons of bait and the bass are active on the bait right now. So that's a decent little fish for this pond. Well, I'm gonna put the frog down just for a minute because I am trying to demonstrate as many different techniques as possible, but obviously the frog technique is viable. We'll throw the old spinnerbait because this pond is kind of dirty and it's still kind of low light time right now. And it's obvious that the fish are kind of keying in on bait fish and shad and things that are moving through the water column. So let's keep on giving them something to chase. Try the big old wormy squirmy. Now this pond is so dirty, I don't even know if this weighted Texas rig is gonna be good. We might have to switch this to completely weightless, but there's the hooks that we got, there's the weights that we got, and there's the big old Mondo worm right there. Watermelon and green, red flake. Can't beat it. Ah, it's gonna drag that thing a little bit. Geez, they don't want the big worm. What about the little worm? What about the old Ned rig? Downsize the old presentation. Now this is the technique that I get is probably the least exciting. 
but hopefully I can demonstrate to you how effective it can be though. Hopefully. It's also very grassy in this pond, so it's gonna be kind of tough. All right, well, so far, I think we've only caught two fish in this video, if my memory serves me correctly, on two different lures. So we're kind of chipping away here. But this is kind of the thing during the summertime. I mean, it's tough. It can be really rough, especially if you live in the south like we do. It's just brutally hot. Those water temps get up high. It becomes very difficult to catch those fish. So having this many different options and techniques is probably helping us in this situation for sure. Well, folks, I think this leaves us with only one option. I mean, we have tried pond after pond after pond. We've tried middle of the day, late in the evening, early in the morning. Has not seemed to matter. But I have not caught enough fish yet to satisfy myself. So I guess the last thing that we can do, the only thing we can do, is to head back to the backyard pond and see if we can catch a few more fish on a couple more of these techniques. Let's head back to the backyard pond. The backyard pond is looking nice. Since we did that little pond stocking and fertilization, I was just telling Andrew off camera, the pond's got a completely different look now. It's got a, a better color to it overall. And you guys may or may not be able to see, but it's not gin clear anymore. It's kind of like medium visibility, if that makes sense, which was the whole point of it. And around the edges, there's a bunch of phytoplankton, a bunch of other stuff kind of sprouting up. So now does it fish any better because of all this? That's gonna be the question. Well, the obvious thing to do might be to throw the Ned rig or the Texas rig, but I don't wanna to resort to that just yet. I still wanna throw the super realistic looking shad swim bait around some, and I wanna throw around that spinner bait some too. My pond will be a much better pond to chuck this in though, cause I got some actual water depth and not nearly as much grass. So we can actually utilize this thing the way that it's supposed to be. I'm kind of nervous, man. I haven't fished the pond since we did that stocking and fertilization and everything. So I don't know. Maybe they're fed. You know, they could be super full right now. Who knows? See, I can almost cast across the whole pond. Let's try just slow rolling. Ooh, now that was a bite right there. That was a bite right there in the corner. May have just grabbed the old tail and just kind of tried to yoink it down. Oh, on land, land bass. Dude, when we stocked the pond, the guy said the water, the surface water temp was 92. 92. That was like a month ago. Yep. And it has been like extreme, extreme hot weather since then. So I bet you the surface temp now is probably like 95, maybe even like 98. Yeah. Oh, that's it right there. That's the one. So we're gonna have to slow it down, but I don't have to downsize and slow it down just yet. Let's grab that full size wormy squirmy right there. I actually cut a couple inches off of it because it was getting a little torn, but you know, it's still a Mondo worm. So a little less Mondo. Let's put that on the bottom and drag it slow. See what we can dredge up. I'm throwing the net rig for a minute. Ooh, I'm eight. Ran underneath the door. Oh, hey there. All right, well, the stocking mission is kind of continuing. Look at that little guy. He, oh, he swallowed it. And you know what? It's fine because we need to remove this little guy anyways. We got to get these guys out of here, but he swallowed that Ned rig. Yes, he did. Wow. Which is impressive because he's a pretty small bass. Yeah. 
to be just inhaling a bait like that. Oh yeah, he's gut hooked anyways. So that's actually a really good cold bass right there for what we've got going on in the pond. We want these guys gone. So might bring him over to neighbor Daryl's and let him uh, cook him up. But the Ned rig, I'm telling you guys, it does work and you don't always catch fish this small, I promise. Boom, Ned rig, finished, finito. Well, for all the real bass fishermen out there that want that hog, let's move on to the old big worm. Big worm. There we go. Okay. Playing with you. There he is. Please don't be gut hooked. That's a better one out there in the deepest water with the big worm. That's a good one. It's a good fish. Please don't be gut hooked. Get him in, he's not gut hooked. Let's go. I'm running from you, Andrew. Uh, 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 uh. Oh! What you get? <laughs> yes. Had it coming. In the lip this time, that's where we like him to be hooked. Nice. There we go. Not a stud by any means. He's a tagged fish, how about that? Heck yeah, dude. One of the OG tagged fish. Hasn't grown a whole lot since then, but we're, gonna, we're trying to work on that right now. He's pretty healthy though. Yep. Got some head and shoulders, some girth. I'm gonna let him live, of course. Let's get him back quick, cause it's hot. I want him to live to bite another day. Boom, so both of the bottom rigs have worked out, which we figured those were the ones that we couldn't miss on, being that it's 112 degrees outside. Now I was using this as a normal like weighted Texas rig, but I was basically dragging it like a Carolina rig. So we do have a couple more lures that have not caught anything yet. So I'm gonna at least try to whip them around some, but it's only gonna get hotter from here on out. So I'm not sure how well it's gonna work. Well, the old tackle box is looking pretty sad these days. We've got lures kind of strewn all over the place in kayaks, in the back of my truck, in the back of my ATV. But don't worry, if you're the one that wins this tackle box, I'm going to replenish everything that was supposed to be in it with newer, better stuff. I'm just gonna like load it with stuff out of the man cave. So don't worry about that. If you missed the giveaway instructions, rewatch that bad boy. It's right in there somewhere. I know you'll find it, but I'm going to give that away to one of you guys. It was a grind. This took us several days to film and we hit like five or six different ponds. Some of them probably didn't even make the video countless hours and I mean it was a grind but we made some of the lures work and I think I demonstrated decently some of the summertime techniques that we were using in this video so hopefully you guys enjoyed smash the thumbs up button if you did get in the comment section let us know what is your favorite summer fishing technique or lure or whatever people get a lot of good information in the comment section so get that in there and drop your best knowledge on us anyways folks thank you so much for watching had a whole lot of fun as usual see you guys next time